That might be our next T-shirt. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> next time somebody says anything about what your life cannot be, you just look at them and say, it's not going to work. You send that message right back where you got it from because it's not going to work here. Come on, that spirit, that spirit of deception and lies and deceit is not going to work around here. Come on, we are more than conquerors around here. We are head and not the tail. We are victorious even before we get started. It's not going to work. The fight is already fixed in our favor. It's not going to work, enemy. I feel restored this morning. I feel restored this morning. Hallelujah. You can ask my wife all oh, for the past 10 days to 11 days now. I haven't been able to even speak two words without having a cough attack. Let alone try to sing a worship song. This is are you kidding me? But God. See, I can look at my own personal circumstance, my own personal health situation, and just say, oh, it, it, it looks a little bleak right now. I'm, I'm got to, and, and, and let me be a little bit transparent with you. I want to I wanna be open and honest with you. Yeah, over the past week, I question God. I got sick on my birthday. I spent my birthday in the bed. And having th the lung infection and, and, and now all of a sudden to, to know that I have this heart issue. I said, why, God? God, I just turned 49 years old. I'm, I'm too young to be going through this. Why? Why me? I've, I've done what you called me to do. I've, I've, I've moved my family all the way from Savannah, Georgia to Sacramento, California to do your work. Why me? Why me? Why, why is this happening to me? And I said, God, I need a word from you. See, I'm, I, I, was, I was so caught up in, in my emotions, my feelings, and, and what's going on right here instead of what was going on here. I got so caught up in that, and then I finally was able to talk to my pastor. He said, don't do anything. Don't even move until you receive a word from God. And that's what I did. I got on my knees. I said, God, I need a word from you. I was in here Friday night, and I know our next-door neighbors, the, the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department, they th probably thought I was crazy because Friday I was just in here hollering. I said, God, I need to hear from you over my life, over the, over the future of life words, church. I need to hear from you, not me, you. And me and God had it out in here. <laughs> And I know they thought I was, that, thought I was crazy because I, I would holler and then I would cough and I would cough some more and then I'd holler. I'd take a break because I was getting too, too caught, caught up and I'd start hollering some more and I'd cough some more. I'd say, God, I'm not hearing from you. I need a, I'm not leaving this place until I hear from you. I was here two hours. I said, God, well. I guess you got other plans. And just when I was about to get up, I heard God said, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. And y'all, it, it had gotten so, so bad, so intense for, for, for me that I, I didn't even have the energy. I didn't even have the energy to say, you know what? It's Friday. I, I, I haven't even wrote, written a sermon yet for Sunday. And I didn't even want to do it. I don't even, I don't, I don't even want to preach on Sunday. And God said, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. And so I want to start today's message and by sharing a scripture. God led me to the scripture and I never 
looked at this scripture in this way before. So I thank the Holy Spirit. It's not what it looks like. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 37, verse 1 through 11. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 through 11. I'm reading the New King James Version. It says, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. Verse 2 says, listen how verse 2 starts. This is the history of Jacob. And the next sentence starts off with Joseph, his son. Now, why does verse 2 start start off by saying this is the history of Jacob? We've been hearing about Jacob now for at least 10 chapters. We, 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 we heard about how, how he was born, how he was grabbing at his brother's heel, and how he deceived his brother for, 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 his, for his brother's birthright. And then, and then we, we know how he, he spent years on the run from his brother. We, we know how he, he wanted to marry, he, he wanted to marry uh, 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 Rachel, but ended up marrying Leah. And the, the, the Bible, you know, is it, 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 nice about it, but let, let's just be real with it. Leah was ugly, and that's not who he wanted, but he, 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 he just said, okay, I'm going to deal with you until I can get to who I want. And so we see, we see, a, we see this long story of, 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 of Joseph, and, and, and I'm sorry, Jacob and his life, and now here it is in, in chapter 37 of, of, of Genesis, it says, now this is the history of Jacob. All that in the past, what, what, what you read for the past 10 chapters, that was just a part of his story. But here's where his history begins. And it starts off with his son, Joseph. So basically, the, the, the Bible is telling us that, Jacob, your history is actually in your future. Your legacy is going to be built on your son. Your, 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 your history, what people will know you about, is still yet to be written. Life Words Church, your history is in your future. What happened last year, what happened in your childhood, that's just a part of your story. But now is, is, this is where your history begins. Verse 2 says, Joseph, being just 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah and his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now, Israel loved, now when they say Israel, it's also, t- it's also talking about Jacob, same person. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Verse 5 says, now Joseph had a dream, <laughs> And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then, behold, my sheep arose and stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. Verse 9. Then he dreamed still another dream. He kept dreaming. He never gave up. Didn't, didn't hear, he didn't hear what, what, what his brothers were saying. It's not going to work. Then he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and even and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is that dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father, Jacob, kept the matter in mind. Could it be that this is true, Joseph? Could, could, could it be? I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to totally shut you out because you, you, you might be be on to something. So it says his father kept the matter in mind. Now, when I read this, I, I didn't understand exactly why God was leading me to it. But then I started thinking about food 
And have you, I, I don't know about you, but I, I love trying new recipes. And have you ever tried a recipe from TV or, or social media? Come on, I, I know we all have. I, I, I love Food Network. I could watch Food Network all weekend, and I'm going to find me a recipe that, that I'm going to try, y'all. I, I, I make biscuits like, like Paula Dean, and, and every time I make them, I'm in the kitchen w- w- with my cast iron scissors. Ooh, them biscuits, y'all, sounding just like Paula Dean. I saute my greens. I don't, I don't boil them because I saw a recipe by Cartier or, or Miss, Miss Brown, if, if you've ever seen her show. I saw her saute greens, and I've been getting sauteing greens ever since. And when I travel to, to a city, when, when, when I have to travel either for work or for pleasure, I always go to Guy Fieri's uh, w- website and, and his, his TV show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dies. I see, okay, I'm in Nashville. Where did Guy go? Okay. Wherever Guy went, that's where I'm going. I'm in Denver. Where did Guy go? San Diego. Where did Guy go? I, every single time. And so most of the time when I make these dishes, they turn out pretty good. They turn out, no, actually, they turn out great. Because <laughs> I just got skills like that. But sometimes I, I take a bite, I gotta be honest, sometimes I take a bite and, and, and I have to say to myself, ooh, this, this don't taste like what it's supposed to <laughs> taste like. So, so, something's missing, or, 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 or may, maybe, maybe it's not food with you, or m- maybe you, 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 you ordered something online, you saw something online, and like, ooh, that would look nice on me. And you order it? Y'all, I ordered a shirt off of Wish.com. Any, any of y'all heard of Wish? Any of y'all ever order something from Wish? Y'all, th- this shirt, I saw it on, on the website. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to kill them on Sunday with that. They're they not ready with that. Y'all, it took, it took eight weeks for that shirt to come, first of all. I don't know what side of the earth that shirt came from, but it took eight weeks. And it finally came. It had so many country stamps on it. This thing took a tour around the world just to get to my house. I opened that shirt. I was like, let me go try this thing on. I went into the bathroom, y'all. This shirt made me look like the Incredible Hulk. I was just like, I was just about to bust out of that thing. I was like, what happened? This is a 2X. A, a, a Smurf 2X. I was so disappointed. I, see, that's what I get for buying a $9 shirt. And so what I saw on the website looked nothing like what I retreat. Y- y'all, I, I had a, y'all remember the Cosby Show episode when, when, when Denise made that shirt for Theo? <laughs> the Gordon Gartrell? That, that's, w- that's what I look like in, in, in this shirt. It was a hot mess. This, this just ain't it. And so what I had ordered looked nothing like what I had received or, or what I envisioned what it was supposed to look like. It looked nothing like what my reality shown. It it was not what it was supposed to look like. So the the title of today's message is, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. Satan is a master illusionist. I mean, he's before there was a David Copperfield, a David Blaine, a Chris Angel. Have you ever been to one of the magic shows in in Vegas? They're amazing at, at what they can do. But before that, there was, this, there was this man called Lucifer who was a, a master of illusions. So you see, uh, illusions, they, they measure in, in, in the art of optical illusion. They'll divert your attention away from what, they, what, what they're really working on. While you're looking over here, they're doing something over here. And then once your attention is back over here on what it was supposed to be on in the first place, all of a sudden what you thought was there is no longer there. It appears to be something all different altogether. And that's what Satan does. That, that, that's what he specializes in, is, is making something that's not real appear real. Making, making you think that, that there, there is something not real, that, 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 that's there, that's not really there. You know, Satan, uh, we first see Satan in the book of Genesis, and, he, and, and we see him described as a serpent. 
But by the time we go into the New Testament in, in Peter's write, writing, all of a sudden he's gone from a serpent to now he's described as a roaring lion. That's a come up. But, and, and so, and so how, how does this happen? How does he, he, he look like a lowly serpent to now being described by, by Peter as a roaring lion? Well, I, I think we, f- we find the answer in, in Lamentations. And, uh, Lamentations is one of the, the, the books that you rarely hear pastors give a message on, but I, I'm, I'm going to go to Lamentations chapter 1, verse 9. And it says here, it says, her, her meaning Jerusalem. It says her uncleanliness was in her skirts, and she did not consider her future. Therefore, she has fallen astonishingly. She has no comforter. See, oh my, check out this last sentence. See, oh my Lord, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. For the enemy has magnified himself. What does that mean? See, the, the, the word magnify right here doesn't mean what, what you think it means. It, it, it's, it's not what it looks like. You see, there are two biblical definitions for the word magnify. The first one is to exalt, to give great honor. That's that, like when we say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's what it means to give great honor, to exalt the name of, of Jesus. But there's also second definition of what means to to cause to appear greater or to seem more important than that than it is in fact the case or to exaggerate. So which definition do you think this scripture entails? For the enemy has magnified himself. The enemy has exaggerated himself. The enemy has deceived to make himself look greater than what he really is. The, the, the enemy has, has made himself appear to be more important than what he really is. The enemy has magnified himself. And I want to take a few moments to just lay the foundation a little bit here and make us truly understand that Satan has no real power over children of God. You, you got, if it, there's nothing else you get out of this message, today, Satan has no true power over you. What he has the ability to do is make you think he has power over you. And how he does that? He's an he's a optical illusionist. He's a master illusionist. One of the, Satan's main weapon in his arsenal is deception. Just wants to deceive you. Wants you to make something, make you think something's real that's not really there. Satan deals in this thing called fear. Come on, we, 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 see, that, we see that today in, in politics. If I can make you scared, if I, can make you, if, if I can make you think that the other side is the boogeyman, I'm going to get your vote. So I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about what, 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 what's scary and, 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 and make you fearful. And that's what Satan deals with in our lives. How, how can I make you afraid? Because if I can make you afraid, you, 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 you're going to do this thing called fight or flight. And most of us, when we're scared, we're going to flight. We're going to run. And this, and this is what happens in our life. And, and so we, we all heard the acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real, right? We've all heard that. In fact, this is Satan's only weapon since he has no real power over a child of God. He uses this false evidence that appears to be real time and time again. Satan has no power over us than what we grant to him. What power are you giving to him? That spirit of fear in you, I think I read somewhere in the Bible where it says God has not given us a spirit of fear. I did, didn't, didn't I read that somewhere? So if God didn't give us a spirit of fear, who, who, where do we get it from? From the master illusionist, the enemy, the one who creates false evidence that have surrendered to be real. He has no authority over us other than what we surrender to him. What, what authority, what power are you surrendering over to the enemy? He has no way to hurt us or destroy us, but his goal is to make us destroy ourselves. And we do a good job of that. If Satan can cause you, can cause you to be- believe a lie, you would destroy yourself. You will give up on your hopes. You will give up on your dreams, your, your vision, the promises that God ha- has said about you. You will walk away grieving. You, you, you will never realize that you are acting on a lie. And that's exactly what happened to Jacob 
in our passage today that, that we were just reading. You see, Joseph's brothers had, it, it, when we read further on, they had thrown him into a pit and then sold him into slavery, all in the effort to, to rid themselves of having a younger brother that was so much more highly favored than them. But one problem remains here. What are they going to tell their daddy? <laughs> now, now we, we, didn't, we didn't throw him in the pit. We didn't sold him off for, for just a few pieces of silver. What are we going to tell daddy? What, 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 what is it that, that, that we're going to tell? And, and notice that their tactics. If, if we go back to Genesis 37 and, and drop down to, to verse 31, check out their tactics. In, in verse 31, it says, so they took Joseph's tunic. Kill the kid or, or, or baby goat uh, of the goats and, and, and dip the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors and brought it to their father and said, we found this. Don't it just sound like a lie right there in there? <laughs> we, 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 we found this. And, and, and do, do, you, do you know whether it's your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. And without a doubt, Joseph is now torn to pieces. Verse 34, then Jacob tore his clothes, put on a sackcloth and on his waist and mourned his son for so many days. Notice the power of the optical illusion here. The enemies of Jacob, which in this case were his own sons, had came and presented false evidence appearing real. They had the evidence of a bloody tunic. They, they took Jacob's coat, dipped it in blood. Here's the evidence. He's dead and gone. He, 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 he's, he, this is it. It was a false assumption, but to him, it felt very real. It felt real to him to, 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 to see his son's coat, his son's tunic just, just being dripped in, in blood. It felt so real to him, and, and the evidence was incorrect. How many times t t today do we, do we see pol police officers uh, 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 taint evidence or, 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 or plant evidence at, at, at a scene? This has been going on since day one. Because this is, what J Joseph, this is what Joseph's brothers did. The evidence was so incorrect, but it was real enough to Jacob to make him respond with defeat and sadness. The son I love most, the, the, the son that, that was supposed to be my future, my, my history w w relied on him, is now gone. But if someone could have gotten to Jacob, if someone could have gotten to Jacob, they would have told him, Jacob, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like, Jacob. Your promise is not dead. Yeah. It, it, it's in the process of, of being f fulfilled. The promise of, of your son, it, he's in the process of being fulfilled so it can, in the future, save your life. And if we read further, we see how the promise was fulfilled and it ended up saving the life of Joseph, Jacob, and his brothers. LWC family, your dream is not over. It's not what it looks like. It's just the beginning. What God has promised to you is not dead. It's alive. It's in the process of bringing out a victory that you can't even imagine yet. Do not let the enemy make you jump to conclusions like, like Fox News or CNN try to make you do. Do not jump to conclusions of what the enemy is trying to put in your ear. It's not dead. It's not over. It's just in the process. Trust the process, Life Words family. It's not over. It's not over. It's not what it looks like. It's false evidence appearing real. It's just an illusion. And I want you to understand that although the enemy may deceive us at, at many times, but most of the time, we are the deceiver of ourselves. We, 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 we say things like, oh, the enemy is busy, devil busy in my life. No, he ain't. That's you. Can, can I be honest? That's you. Stop. My pastor says this way. The devil's bad, but he ain't that bad. <laughs> so you see, the, and I want to give you this key point today. The most likely form of deception is self-deception. I want you to get that. The most likely form of deception is self-deception. We deceive ourselves more than anybody else can deceive us. 
Because of what we see, what we believe, what we hear, all of a sudden it creates fear. It creates false emotions. We trick ourselves out of the favor of God all the time because the blessings don't align up to how we envision the blessing to look like. We do it all the time. If I, if I can give this message a, a, another title, it would, be, it would be this. It doesn't look like what you think it's supposed to look like. It doesn't look like what you think it's supposed to look like. God can be doing something so amazing in your life. And, be, and because it's not what, what we pictured, it, it doesn't look like how, how we pictured the blessing. It doesn't look like how we pictured the calling to go. All of a sudden, we miss the blessing entirely. Oh, I picture God. I picture a, a five-bedroom house, but all I'm qualifying for is three-bedroom houses. Come on. I guess it ain't a blessing. I guess I have to settle. But do you know maybe that three-bedroom house that you're qualifying for, God is saying, I'm trying to save you some money. I'm, I'm trying to connect you with, with a neighborhood that needs you. I'm, I'm trying to connect you with people who already live in that community that can bless you or that can elevate you or maybe can provide something for your children. Just because it doesn't look like the way you think it's supposed to look like, don't think I'm not blessing you. Oh, I pictured marrying, and I, this, this one was me. I pictured ma marrying a woman with, with no kids. But God ain't blessed me with anyone. Brother, we 40 years old. We all got kids. <laughs> you better stop. God has blessed you with, with, with someone who's willing to put up with you, will, 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 willing, willing to, 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 to just be there for you, willing to, to put up with all your ways and all these issues that you got, and you got, you got to hold up because this ain't, this ain't what it looked like when I envisioned the woman that God had for me. Brother, if you don't marry that woman, <laughs> it ain't what it looked like, but it's still a blessing. That poster in, in the hallway. When you walk out here, that poster in, in the hallway that you see, I'm here to tell you that, that poster's coming down today because that, is, that was my vision. And God said, that's not my vision, that's yours. And I'm at a point right now, Life for His Family, if it doesn't look like God's vision, I don't want it. Now, it's okay to have your own vision. It's okay to have to, to, to picture things in a certain way. But in the end, if it's not God's will, I don't want it. And so that poster is coming down because in the end, I know that God's will is so much greater than anything that I can envision. That's a beautiful building, but God said, that's not what I envision. I just need you to trust me. I just, need, I, I just need you to walk with me. I, 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 need, I need you to, to put all your faith and trust in me. And just because it may not look like what you think it's supposed to look like. Y'all, we, we were across the street in that small little, that little 500 square foot office over there. And this building was open and available. And the, and the occupants of it before we, we were here, they tried to get me to say yes and, and sign a lease. Come on, it's yours if you want it. But I was like, mm-mm. That ain't, that, that, that ain't what God said for me. No, that wasn't what I said for me. That wasn't what I envisioned. Because when I walked in here, I saw the, 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 the walls up and, and I didn't see the possibility of us expanding and, and tearing down some walls and really making this look like a church. I couldn't see it. And so I was like, this, this, this ain't for us. But in the end, it was not my will, but the will of God. You see, it's okay to have a vision, but my, my next key point is this. Don't let your vision blind you from God's will. Don't let your vision blind you from God's will. Because God's will is so much greater than anything. The word words said, anything that we can ask or imagine. So why would I limit God's will by focusing on my vision? We recite the prayer, but can we live by it? We, we, we recite in, in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, let your will be done. Not, 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 no, not, not let my will be done. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's, uh, what, what, God, what you're doing in heaven and, 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 uh, up there, I want you to do it down here in my life. That's what that says. 
God, what you're doing up there, I want to see you do it in my life down here. But that cannot happen as long as I, I, got, I got these prerequisites of, of what I want the blessing to look like. God, bless you with a car. Oh, but I want a red car. God bless you with a house, but you waiting for the picket fence. Who got a picket fence nowadays? God bless you with a job, and just because it didn't have the amount of zeros that you wanted on it, well, maybe it's step one to get you to the, to, to the amount that you're looking for. God is saying, follow my will. Follow my will and, and see when I pour out a blessing for you. We have to get to a point where we are willing to say, God, if it's not your will, I don't want any parts of this thing. I even had to get to that point this week of saying that for, for this church. God, if this is not your will, I don't want it. I don't want it. God, have your way. Have your way in my life. Have your way when it comes to my health. Have your way when it comes to my family. Have your way when it comes to not my church, not Pastor Tasha's church, but God, have your way in, in, in your church. What will you have to do in your church? Let, let me get out of your way and just allow you to move. Every person, every single person in, in the Bible that I call to do something great or amazing or change the world, I'm, I'm sure what they experienced didn't look nothing like what they thought it would look like. Come on. He, he called Moses, Moses, I need you to go to Egypt, free my people, and take them to the promised land. I'm sure, come on, come on, the human side of us, all he heard was promised land because that sounds good. You see, but, but there, 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 there was something in the middle that, that Moses wasn't thinking about. He heard, free my people and promised land. But in the middle of freeing the people and getting to the promised land, now I got to deal with locusts. Now I got to deal with plagues. Now I got to deal with complaining people. Now I got to deal with people who, who, who are just giving up on God. Now I got to deal with people who are worshiping all kind of things except God. This isn't what it's supposed to look like, God. This isn't what I planned. See, what I thought was when I, when I went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, he would say, okay. <laughs> and we would walk, not on water. We're not walking. You're not splitting any seas. We're just walking away. And over this hill is our promised land. That land that you talked about flowing with milk and honey, and we just going to eat until our bellies are full all day, just live off the land. We about to live it up not what it looks like Moses that's not what it's looking like God called David to to be king David at a, a young age a teenager God said you're the next king of Israel can you imagine telling your 14 year old son that you're the next king of a country of a people you tell me I'm about to be king at 14 years old I'm like ha, ha, I ain't got to go to school no more Mom, Dad, don't y'all tell me nothing because I'm the ruler over you. Don't say nothing. Come on. But David, it's not what it looks like. David didn't realize that the, king, the current king, Saul, would be chasing him down, trying to kill him because he's jealous of the favor of God in his life. He didn't realize that, that he would be, that even David, even though he was a man after God's own heart, that he would be a deceiver himself and, and have somebody kill off a, a woman's husband because he lusted after her. We did, he didn't know all that. It wasn't supposed to look like this, David, but here's what the reality looks like. And even Jesus, y'all, God in the flesh, he was called to change the world. And because it was starting to look a little bit different, Jesus, being, being, being human at, at, at the time, being man, he went to God and said, God, this isn't what it was supposed to look like. And he, he even got to a point, he said, God, take this cup away from me. This is, this is too much. So you didn't, you didn't tell me that I would have to die. You didn't tell me that I would have to suffer such a, such a painful death on the cross. God, take this cup away from me. 
You see, th- th- when, when he was in that, in that garden that, that night before he was, he was crucified, he, it was false evidence appearing real. Jesus was afraid. Jesus was human. He, he was afraid. But aren't you glad today that Jesus didn't allow the self-deception to get into the way of God's will? Because he, he, he finally calmed himself down. He calmed himself down because like, like we all do, like, like when I was here earlier this week. God, I'm mad right now. Why me? What's going on with my body? Why is this attack happening to me? I've obeyed you. I've done all this. Why me? Take this cup away from me. And then I had to sit down, calm down, and relax. And Jesus relaxed and said, nevertheless, not my will. Not my will. But let your will be done. Let your will be done. See, this isn't about me. So let your will be done. If I have to die on a cross, Lord, just let your will be done. If it means saving the world, let your will be done. God, God if, if I have to go through some hills and, and climb some mountains, God, if I have to go through tests, God, if I have to go through surgery, whatever it is, just let your will be done. See, it's the job of the enemy to get us to focus on the problems of the current circumstances. The lack of money in the bank right now. The lack of spiritual hunger in our world right now. The lack of our children that, that, who are lost right now. The fact that our, our bodies, come on, our bodies are, are sick right now. I know, I know that, that for me. The fact that we're sick right now. Or, or, or the fact that some of us, the marriage just look, is looking like it's just over. And, and the fact that hope is just, seems to be lost within our world. This is the current circumstances, but it's not what it looks like. And I know these are some very real issues we all face. And the evidence appears to be real. It feels so real because I I feel it. I feel the hurt. I feel the pain. I I look at my bank account and and I I see how, how, Pastor Trey, this is real. But it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. The circumstances appear to be very tangible, but, and we cannot see the solution, so we think about giving up. We think about giving in. We can't figure out the answer to the problem through our own complex way of thinking, our own thought process, so we're tempted to lose hope. But I came to tell someone today that I'm praying that God will open your eyes in the spirit today. To not see things in the human form, not see things in the natural, but start seeing things in the supernatural. Start seeing things in the spirit. Start start seeing things the way God sees them. You see, we 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 can we can we can turn on the news and 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 try to get get the uh, have the weatherman give us the weather forecast. And I don't know about you, but these Sacramento weather people they are always wrong. (laughs) I'm like, what is going on? And then we look at our lives and, and we, we try to forecast how the next few years are supposed to go. And, and I want to let you know that the way God sees your future, is, it, it, it looks nothing like the way that you see it. Right. And you have to humble yourselves and say, God, not my will. Let your will be done. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would love a new home within five years. Yeah, I would love a new job within a couple of years. Yeah, I would love to see more money in the bank in a couple of years, but God, not my will, but your will be done. Yes, Lord. I just pray right now that your eyes be open so that you can see in the spirit today that your future, your future is so much greater than you're right now, yeah. that you're not going under, you're going over. Come on. Come on, you're not going under. You're going over the problem. You're going over the valley. God is building a bridge right now. And as you know, when bridges are built, they're not built overnight. Sometimes they take years to be built. Trust the process. God is building you a bridge. He is taking you from here to there. Trust him because you're not going over. You're going under. You're not the tail. You are the head. You're not going to die. You're going to live. That's the favor of God in your life. What it looks like right now is not what it really is. And lastly, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? The devil's report says that you're sick and there's no way that you will ever recover. But the report of the Lord says, by his stripes, I am healed. 
Come on, the devil trying to tell you that, oh, Pastor Trey, you got a heart condition. You about to drop dead next week. But the word, that's not the word. That's not the report of the Lord. The report of the, the, the Lord says that I shall live and not die. The devil's report says that you're broke and that God has forsaken you and that you're going to lose everything. But the report of the Lord says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Come on, come on, come on. You, you may look at your bank account and say, ooh, there's not much, but you're not on the corner with your hand out. You are not begging for bread. The devil's report says that you are bound to your addiction and you will never be set free. But the report of the Lord says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the devil's report or the report of the Lord? When you leave here today, I want you to take a look at your passenger side mirror in your car. And you'll see a warning label on the bottom of that mirror. And it says, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Don't forget that. Even what appears to be real in that mirror, it's not what it looks like. They're actually closer than what they appear. So the, the, what you see, as, as, as it looks like it's far off, it's actually very close to you. The blessing in your life, it looks like it's far away. It's actually very close. The objects behind you, the objects on the side of you are actually closer than what they actually appear. It, it's not what it looks like. Life for his family, I need you to believe that today. The blessing is coming and it's closer than you think it is. The objects that you're looking at are actually closer than what they appear. Whatever situation that you're facing this morning, whatever that you're facing, whatever false evidence that is appearing real in your life has or that has been placed in front of you, you need to remember God is faithful. Amen. And the promise, the promise he made to you has not died. It's still alive. It may appear to be dead, but in reality, it's in the process. You ever call, you ever call when you order something and, and, and it hasn't shown up and you call and say, hey, where's my order? What's the first thing they say? Oh, it's in process. We, 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 we appreciate your patience at this time. It's in process. So the next time you're asking God, and I'm talking to myself here, the next time you're asking God, why me? God, when? When is this going to happen? When, when is the blessing going to happen? When is the growth going to happen? When is this going to happen? God's saying it's in process. I appreciate your patience right now, but it's in process. Come on, come on. I can hear God telling you right now, whatever it is that you're facing, it's in process right now. I appreciate your patience right now. It's in process. God, I need a healing right now. I've been suffering for years and years and years. It's in process. I appreciate your patience right now, but it's in process. God, my bank account just not lining up with my expenses. It's in process. I appreciate your patience right now, but it's in process. God, my marriage just seems to be on the rocks in the Indy. God, um, it's in process. I appreciate your patience right now, but it's in process. Come on, you got to believe that your blessing is in process this morning. It's on the way. It's on the way this morning. It may appear to be dead, but when it, in reality, it's still alive. Don't give up it while you're in the process. Don't give up before the blessing arrives. You're going to see the fulfillment of the promise. You know why I know that? Because we serve a God that cannot lie. That's right, right. We serve a God that said, I cannot lie. Come on. If I told you it's going to happen, if it's, if, if it's written in my word, it has to happen. To Come on. If, 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 I read it, if I wrote it down and, and for you to read generations later, if, if, if this is a promise that I made to Jacob, if I made the promise to Isaac, I'm making the same promise to you. It has to happen because I cannot lie. Come on. Yeah. So wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord, yes, Lord. shall renew their strength. Yeah. They shall what? Mount up. Mount up. That means, that, that means what? I'm, 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 I'm looking over the problem. I'm mounting up over the problem. I'm not down here with the problem. I'm mounting up over. You see basketball players right now, when, when they make a good play, they do something like this. You're too small for me. You, you, you're not even on my level. Problems are not even on my level. 
Health, you're not even on my level. Worry, you're not even on my level. Depression, you're not even on my level because I'm trusting God in the process. I appreciate the patience right now, but I know he's working things out for me. So I'm going to just remain patient because it's not what it looks like. What I'm facing, it's not what it looks like. I can look at the problems I'm facing right now with my heart. Lungs working at 75% capacity right now. I said, woe is me. But God says, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. This, 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 this is just, this is just a, a, a chapter in, in a beautiful story that I'm writing. See, see what, what, what's a beautiful story if, if, if everything looks like, okay, God blessed me, and for the rest of my life, everything was a bed of roses. Who's going to read that book? But when you look at my story, and, 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 and you see that, 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 that I had a, a father who, 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 who had a drug addiction, but today he designed microchips that are in our cell phones. Come on, if that's not God right there, the fact that, some, that my dad would, would, would abandon me in, in, in the city of Oakland yeah, because he had a crack addiction, come on. That, that, that the drugs were more important to me at that time. And now today he is healed, he is delivered, and he is designing, he, he designed the microchips that are in our cell phone. So every time that I see somebody pick up a cell phone, I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your favor is still working. It's in the process, and I saw it working. I'm glad I stayed patient. I'm glad I waited on you, that I didn't give up on him. And when you look at my story even more, and, and, and you see that four years ago, we lost our son at the age of 21. How painful is that? Most people lose their mind. Most people give up on God. Marriages, marriages just, just break apart because, because the, 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 the grief is so intense. But God, but God is, great, is, is a sustainer. But God is a keeper. You see, this, this, what you see up here, this, this, fine, this fineness that you see up here, I got, I got on the scale this morning. I was about eight pounds lighter. Come on. What you see up here? It's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. Can I be real with you? There, there's a Spanx t-shirt phone under this right now. And, and I need to hurry to get out of this because it's, it's hot right now. That's why I'm sweating. It's not these lights. It's this Spanx I got on. Come on. We got to keep it real this morning. It's not what it looks like. Come on. Come on. Ladies, it's not just y'all. It's, it's us men too. It's not what it looks like. The favor of God is on your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you this morning.